in that what happens is, is that you have an extension in universal thin. And using an extension in universal thin, you actually log in to the IM server that's built into the system. When you create an extension, you get an IM account automatically. When you log into your IM account, you see all the other people in your thing automatically, a roster generator automatically. It's not a pass through, it's a surrender. Yeah, it's yeah. So, okay. But so you have there's no gateway functionality. Right. To, but for all the party IM services, that's yep. that's 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 But we also have an IM component, which is um, in Python, which actually connects and gives extra services, like discovery, you know, the, the IM XMPP discovery protocol. This is also, we actually use that to provide extended services like the you know, directory or call control. So you can, you know, when, you, if you, when you're getting a call, it tells you who's calling you. So you can actually pop that up on the screen. The thing and is, uh, our Java <coughs> server is a full Java server. So you can interact with other Java servers in the same way that any Java server can. So that's part of the advantage of what we have. So right now, I mean, it's configured in a very specific way, but you know, going ahead, we will probably configure it such that it can interact with it. Maybe even put Google Just a second. I want to actually. But we also, uh, for this provisioning, we have other services that we've written that are also open source, like we have a CDP daemon and <coughs> As a zero con uh, even, and we actually create our own VLAN. So <coughs> if one of these phones is plugged in, it actually switches into a different VLAN, and then we have our own DHCP running in there and DHCP. So it's pretty much plug and play with most phones. These phones don't need um, VLAN, they're all zero con, so they just directly go bypass it. But Cisco's and Polycom's, they actually need to be on their own card. So is your, is your software deployed on uh, Zorcom boxes exclusively, or? Is that and you have no. a partnership with Zorcom or we do you have just a partnership with Zorcom, yeah. Okay. Actually, you could have uh, Zorcom yeah. Yeah. But, but actually, uh, Zorcom is our partner in America yeah. who gives us all these TDM interfaces, so it's a one all in one solution. However, we have customers who do it on HP ProLand. In fact, I would say HP ProLand servers are, most of my customers are on that actually. Well, someone put it on Soper's box, so. So, you know, and we're pretty light. We don't put, we've customized the CentOS to quite a bit. So we don't just install everything and, you know, the kitchen sink onto your system. We're pretty good about it. So we, the install is really tailored. It's very light. If you, even if you try to install it, you know, we even customize Anaconda to a point. So it's a pretty tightly integrated CD. So, well, just to be, put it another way, you guys integrate the software with the Zorcom yeah. box, not the other way around. Right, it's a matter of an install. Not, Zorcom's distribute. not distributing their boxes with yeah. your software. At this actually, moment. they no, are. Zorcom is. Zorcom actually, is. They, are. They, are. they are. They are starting to. Yeah. Oh, okay. And, and uh, so that, that basically is practically a commodity server in itself. It just has the, the way it's sort of internally you know, designed such that it makes kind of like a special So our software works <coughs> on the world. It's just really Once you've got problems with I am trying to get now. Well, that's a sovereign issue of Vietnam. I mean, if they block I am out, I'm you know. Yeah, that's basically a firewall type Well, you can always take one of these blocks running inside Vietnam at the end of the firewall. I mean. Right. As long as you can run tour to connect the box inside the firewall, the box inside the firewall. I'd be happy with the really slow onion routing. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, go ahead. Okay. SMS. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we don't have that. Um, no, Asterix can actually do SMS. Okay. There's KDE has some SMS. Like, I know KDE has some KSMS or something, but I haven't personally used Okay. Okay. No, I haven't. Really, sorry. <coughs> Yeah, very good. Okay, I guess I've, I've underestimated the interest in this, uh, in this topic. Uh, no worries, Nathan, during the tea break, uh, you have time to get ask questions from the guys here. Vikram, Levin, and uh, Ming, Ming Yong. So these are three guys on voice route. If you have additional questions, you can approach them and ask them. No, no worries, you can ask them during the tea break. Um, thank you, Vikram. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for
I'll get you the. Sorry to overshoot your. No worries, no worries. I really underestimated the interest in this, uh, this topic. It's very, very encouraging. <coughs> but in any case, we are open source, so please feel free to contribute and just email us and uh, just join. Yeah. Where, where are you guys based out? Singapore? We have two offices, one in the US and one in Singapore. Okay. But we are predominantly out of Singapore. <coughs> just, just a question. Sure. Uh, does this Singapore open source companies buy without? No, we're selling. We're actually selling. Actually, we have, as I mentioned, we have six. We have about five to six hundred customers worldwide. We're selling. Yeah, and we are actually in the process of uh, partnering up with a few large IT companies in Singapore. Yeah, absolutely. The definition of open source is a lot of definition. No, no, we're not so selling. It means source. our source code is out there, and um, <laughs> No, we're not selling open source. As I mentioned, right, Druid, there are two versions. There's Druid Open Source Edition, Druid OSE, which is what you just saw. And then there's Druid UCS, Unified Communication Server. That's the commercial version of our software that has support. So if you have problems with OSE, you can't call up anyone. Nobody's taking your calls. Yeah, but, I mean, Red Hat is selling open source. Interesting. Enterprise version, or you get FOC, you don't have to pay. It's not open source, no. No, that's just free software. You're, you're thinking of something like, say, MySQL, where yeah. it's dual license. You can go and download MySQL. You can download the, you, you can download the entire service. Sorry, and it's all, I'm and it's all free software. So <coughs> but if you want to actually get support from MySQL, who's now on the price software? You have to purchase. My sequel, you can't even run it commercially if you haven't paid for it. No, it's open source. No, but it has a non commercial clause. Because the client libraries, the MySQL client libraries, are their proprietary ones. So if you actually have that somewhere, anything, if any software is actually linked with those libraries, then you can't use it commercially. For example, Apache, you know, Apache yeah. 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 That's a different philosophy. Those are actually run by a non-profit organization. Access is open source thing. I think there are a lot of interesting legality issues and commercial issues and dealing with open source. Yeah, so 